Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Hello everybody. Namaste. My name is Shama Anjum and I'm a 7th grader. My sister star Aisha, who's just graduated from Adam. high school, and my brother Nabil Asmat, who is a 5th grader, are going to be helping me a lot during this video presentation. We three plan a series of video presentations on data networking basics. Please note that a YouTube ID is to tell you our story. Our main target audience is smart and ambitious kids under 15 seeking to be ID professionals at young age itself. The special thing about our video is that it's single shot, means unedited, short and simple for kids to understand easily. This is our second class and my first class and we are going to be discussing about the topic Wi-Fi or wireless technology. Now what's a Wi-Fi? A Wi-Fi is a type of wireless technology. Then what's a wireless? A wireless is a technology. Now the correct definition for Wi-Fi is that it's a standard or a specification to implement a wireless network. That's what the correct definition for Wi-Fi is. This specification is also known as an 802.11 specification. This was approved in 1997 by IEEE. IEEE is basically a global organization of standardization on data networking basics. Now, um, let's come back to Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi is an abbreviation for wireless fidelity. Now, just like many things in this world, Wi-Fi has its own advantages plus disadvantages. One of its advantages is that it's very simple to set up. And one of its disadvantages is that it can, it can be only used for small areas. What I mean is that it cannot be used for areas that extend more than 100 meters. Well then what do we use in cases as such? That's where we use other wireless technologies such as WiMAX, 3G, etc. That's where we use those kind of wireless technologies. Now let's come back to wireless. What is a wireless network? It's a network where users connect to each other without the usage of wires. It's in the name itself. It's a wireless network. Now for us to get a better understanding of Wi-Fi and WiMAX, I have a picture over here for you. Mona, could you please show the picture? In this picture, as you can see, there are two networks below, each consisting of three laptops. Now these two networks, these laptops, pardon me, are connected to a device labeled as WiMAX CPE. CPE stands for Custom Premise Equipment. Now as you can see, this WiMAX device is connected to a mobile tower. This mobile tower is known as a base station in Mumbai networking language. Between this WiMAX device and this base station, WiMAX is being used. 802.16 is the specification for WiMAX. Now as you can see, this base station is connected to another base station. Between these two base stations, uh, WiMAX can be used, wireless, another wireless technology can be used, uh, mobile network technology, or even a satellite communication technology can be used. By the way, did you know a satellite communication technology has the highest coverage area? It can go like tens or even hundreds of kilometers apart. Now as you can see, this base station is connected to the internet via the pink cable. It is a cable. Now I have another picture over here for you, Mona, could you please show the next? Now in this picture, as you can see, a computer is trying to connect to a server which is quite far away. In this, uh, most of the connection is uh, being done by wi wirelessly. Now over here, you can say 3G, over here, WiMAX, and over here. This is the main part. Main part of the path the computer is taking to read the server. Over here, satellite communication technology is being used. And then over here, 3G again, WiMAX, and etc. etc. So now, uh, you must be thinking, okay, I got it, what a wireless network is. It's a network where users connect to each other wirelessly. But how exactly can that work? I mean, like, without wires, I just don't understand. Well, we are here to discuss about that. In this picture, as you can see, a host, labeled as host1, has a, it's connected to a rectangular device. Do me a favor and ignore that for now, because I'll be explaining later in this video what it is and what it does. Now, as you can see from this computer, a dotted line is going. This dotted line represents a wireless connectivity. As you can see, it's going towards a device labeled as WR. This stands for wireless router. In other words, it's known as Maxis Point Gateway, Gateway Router, all the same. Now, from there, it's connected to the internet via cable. Now, let's come back to this device. Why is it known as a wireless router? It's known as a wireless router because it has wireless features in it. That's why. Now, just because it's known as a wireless router and it connects to computers wirelessly, it does not mean it cannot connect to computers wireless wire with wire too. What I mean is that it can, it can connect to computers like this too, with a wire, as in this picture too. Can you show me the next picture, please, Mona? In this picture, as you can see, a computer is trying to connect to the uh, router with wire, and some computers over here are connecting it wirelessly too. Now, um, let's come back to this device. Now, if a computer, in this case, this computer, wants to connect to something wirelessly, in this case, a wireless router, it needs to have a device connected to it. That's where this device comes in. 
it's known as a wireless adapter. What it does is, it helps a computer connect to something wirelessly. So that's what this wireless adapter does. Now, I hope Monu can show us a real-time wireless adapter and explain a little about wireless adapters too. Could you please, Monu? Sure, Shamu. This is a wireless adapter. It has a USB port. And it is just shaped like a USB memory stick. And it is very easy to install. You get the software with it when you buy it. And just install the software. After that, just connect it to the USB port. We will be showing a demo how to connect to the internet at the end of the class. As the name indicates, the wireless adapter can generate wireless waves through air so fast to some distances without getting tired. These waves are called high frequency radio waves. The frequency range is somewhat 2 to 6 gigahertz. This wireless adapter places the computer data on this radio wave and this mixed wave is thrown out on the air. This is basically a kind of mixing the computer data and the wave and this mixing process is called modulation. Separating these two at the other end is just the reverse operation and that operation is called demodulation. I hope Siddha can explain more about waves. Sure, Mono. There are many different kinds of waves in this world. The simplest example I can give you, which you all must have no, you know about it, is the water waves. The waves which are created in the ocean, those are the water waves. You can't see them with, the, with your eyes. Another example is that of electrical waves. These are the waves created by electrons when they move through a conductor. The electrons move through a conductor and they produce electrical waves. Another example is that of light waves. Light waves are created from a source of light. It falls onto our eye into our retina. We can just have the sensation of light waves. We can't see them. Then there's the sound waves. I'm speaking now. The vibrations are created in the air and it goes to the speaker. These vibrations are the sound waves. These three examples which I just gave you, electrical, sound and light waves, these can't be seen with the naked eye. Now all these waves in general have certain characteristics in common. The one feature I'm going to talk about now is its frequency. Frequency is the number of vibrations per second. The higher the frequency means the higher the energy of the wave. The lower the frequency means the lower is the wave energy. For wireless communication, we make use of high frequency radio waves. Since these radio waves have high frequency, they've got high energy and then they can travel maximum distance. As is shown in the next diagram, please Mona, can, we, can you show me that? This is the antenna and the radio waves are being propagated and are traveling all through 360 degrees. They're spreading throughout the air because they've got high frequency and therefore high energy. So we can take an advantage of this situation. We can combine our you know, user data is basically digital data. So we can combine our user data and these high energy radio waves together and then we can spread it through the air. This combination or mixing up of the user data and the radio waves is called um, modulation. We modulate the user data with the radio waves and then send it throughout. This is basically how wireless communication takes place. But when these waves along with the user data are spread through the air from the wireless adapter, if we have other neighboring you know, wireless routers around you in, your, in the other room or the other office, whatever, they can also capture your user data. This can be quite dangerous as will be explained by my sister Shama. Shama, can you continue please? Sure. Thank you Sutra and Monu for your very nice explanation on waves and wireless adapters. Now just like my sister said, it can be a very dangerous thing, you know, as, uh, thinking about our neighboring routers catching our uh, data because in case you're sending say your credit card information through the network, if they catch your credit card information, you know what can happen, right? They can go to your back. They can do a lot of stuff with your credit card information. So we, can, we don't want them read our, reading our credit card information. So we need to keep our data safe, protected, right? One way is to encode it with a key so that even if they catch it, they won't be able to read it. That's a good idea, isn't it? This encoding the data with a key is known as encryption. And uh, in the other end, when they get it, they need to get know it, right? The, this is known as decryption. Taking out the key to get the actual data is known as decryption. Please note that this key that you are encoding with 
Okay, encoding your data with should be done to your computer, to the wireless router, and to the other hosts in the network, so that at least they can decrypt, as I told just now. So now there are many encryption methods in this world. One of the oldest is WEP. WEP stands for Wire Equivalent Privacy. Now, since it's, one, it's, it's a very old one, so it's not being used a lot right now because there are tools to crack the code of WEP. So it's been replaced by WPA, WPA2, etc. So in this generation, WPA and WPA2 are being used more frequently. Now, uh, tips of the day. Tip number one. 